absent from flesh, oh, blissful thought, what joy this moment brings. Freed from the blame my sin has brought, from pain and death it sings. Absent from flesh, oh, glorious day, in a one triumphant stroke, my reckoning paid, my charges dropped, and the bonds round my hands are This morning to Ebenezer, my name's Nick, I'm one of the pastors here, well thank you for joining us. Uh, again, if you're new uh, or fairly new and you haven't uh, met with me yet, uh, please make sure you get a chance to just, just find me, I'd like to introduce myself to you and uh, if you'd like a chance to meet with me through the week, uh, Wednesdays are a good day, um, Wednesdays in the morning, okay, when my Wednesday afternoons are a little bit... Uh, touch and go right now. So Wednesday in the forenoon, I would love to just sit and talk. Um, if you are not involved in our nine o'clock Sunday school time, I implore you to get involved. All right. We need you there. You need there. We need to keep the word of God feeding us. Okay. We need to keep studying it together. It's, a, it's essential to health in the Christian life. I'm not going to shade that in any other way. It's important to do that, all right? So please get involved. It'll be to your value and to the value to your kids, grandkids, etc. Uh, so join us, if you will. Uh, just a, another heads up, later in the month on the 31st, there's going to be a luncheon here. So please plan uh, to join us for that. Uh, I think the ladies group is going to put it together. I don't think you have to bring anything. Uh, everything will be provided. Um, Let's see here. Um, it, as we are in a transition here in the office, uh, as you know, uh, that Kathy has retired and she's going to do some traveling, and we're going to respect that. She has often been the person that gets a phone call that if you have a need or as there's a visit to take place, she's been the person that calls. We're, we're changing that, all right? And as we presently change that, please just call the office or call myself, David. Uh, Pastor Dick, and we will take care of those needs as moving ahead. 
Um, there's a change as well, and if you haven't read in your bulletin, there is a change in here you need to be aware of. If you are part of the college and career group, uh, they were not, not going to be meeting at the EPSIS next week. They're going to be meeting over at the schoolhouse over here at the same time. And I think David said something about pizza. So um, we'll leave that for what it is. Uh, also, um, I just wanted to let you know that we're pleased to announce that a uh, long-term missionary of ours, Tim Gallant, has accepted a position here in church to help with the office work that's been kind of left. So we're thrilled to have that position filled. Uh, he should be coming on staff here in the next couple weeks, and we'll have a more formal introduction with that. So with that, we're excited. And now we're going to go to one of our deacons who's going to pray for us this morning. Good morning, everybody. Did anybody complain about getting wet when you walked in this morning from the rain? I hope not. We sure need it. <laughs> uh, I'd like to have, there's, there's a missions group going out tomorrow to Paraguay. If everybody who's going to that, on that missions trip to Paraguay would stand, please, we want to pray for you. Don't be shy. All right, great. All right, let's, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. And Lord, right now, I'm really thankful for the rain that you sent to us. Uh, you know exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. And Lord, we don't have to question you or try to run things on our own. We know that you are in charge and that you know exactly uh, where you want to send rain and, and where you want to keep dry. Just everything about this world, Lord, you are in charge. Right now, we want to pray for these folks that are going to Paraguay. Lord, give them safe travels. I pray that you will give them an effective ministry while they're there. Lord, help them to see hearts changed, their own hearts, and also hearts um, and in Paraguay with the people that they're, they're serving. I just pray that you'll protect them, get, keep them healthy, uh, bring them back safely, and Lord, just help them to have a great time serving you there. And we also know that there are other trips coming up, Lord, other opportunities for us to serve you. I pray that you will be in each of those opportunities as well and just speak to people's hearts, both uh, the people that are serving and the people that are being served. Lord, I just pray that you will uh, bring people to you and, and soften people's hearts and, and uh, turn them toward you. Lord, again, we thank you so much for the protection that you've given us this summer. I, I think of people that are going to be traveling on vacations coming up before school starts again. I uh, just pray that you will give them safe travels and bring them back safely as well. And then, Lord, just help us to be looking for opportunities to serve you in, in our everyday lives, not necessarily going somewhere necessarily, but um, just serving you in our, our jobs and in our interactions with other people every day. Help us to see that that's why you've placed us here. That's why you've allowed us to be here is to serve others and to serve you and to bring glory to you. So we just thank you so much for all that you do for us and that you allow, to do for, allow us to do for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, we look forward uh, to the work that you folks are going to do in Paraguay. Here in a couple minutes, we're going to hear about some work that was done uh, in New York City just this past week. Um, but we're going to first, let's stand, and uh, we're going to worship the Lord together. Um, we, the God, God did send the rain today. This song that we're going to sing first is called Always the Chorus. Oh my God, he will not delay my refuge and strength always. I will not fear his promise is true. My God will come through always. And I hope that's our, uh, our, your prayer today, knowing that God is there for you. Let's say hello to our neighbors. Get into worship this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord together. Oh, oh. 
trouble surrounds me, chaos abounding, my soul will rest in you. I will not fear the war, I will not fear the storm, my help is on the have a seat and what a great day to be in the house of the Lord today with our church family and just talk about um, your students um, they are such hard workers um, a delight to serve Jesus with um, I couldn't ask for a better group um, I almost feel guilty being their youth pastor I don't feel worthy at times because they're such great kids um, so just to kind of recap we're going to have um, three people share and if you guys could just share your name so everybody knows who you are and, um, and then we have a stranger uh, sharing last. So, um, but we have some photos of, of what we did at the group. Um, we mainly did a Bible school at Graffiti Church and then served meals uh, to the elderly with Stanley Isaac Center. Those are the two main projects we did. We divide up into two teams. So um, one, of the, one kid will share about each of the places and then we'll close it up. So thank you again for your prayers, most importantly, and your support. And I'll turn it over to them. So we'll have uh, Isabel, <coughs> then Genesis, then Luke, and then the last person. Hi, my name is Isabel Carmen. Um, and on this trip, I was at Graffiti Church the majority of the time. Um, Monday through Thursday, we helped run a week of their kids' camp. It was very different than um, our vacation Bible school. The days lasted from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they had it the week prior um, and were also planning to have it the week after we left. Some of what these days involved were singing worship songs, playing group games, playing board games with the kids, eating lunch, going to the park, um, having a Bible lesson, having a snack, 
crafts, recreation, Bible drills, and more. It was very cool to see um, and like to get to know each of the kids and to watch how relationships and um, trust were built throughout the week. There were, a few, there were a few kids we could think of that certainly managed to bring attention to themselves and get into some trouble. Um, two of these names include Jax and Adden. However, I had the opportunity to see a different side of these two boys while I played Connect Four with Jax and Uno Flip with Adden. By the end, the one boy, one boy Adden, asked me when I was coming back on the last day. It was an awesome experience, which taught me a lot. One thing that stuck <coughs> out to me throughout the trip was the fact that the trip wasn't about me. I could watch myself trying to figure out what I could, could get out of the trip when the purpose was not for my enjoyment, but to give glory to the Lord and point people to Jesus. I am very glad I was able to attend this trip and grow closer to Jesus and the other youth and leaders who came on this trip. Thank you. Hi, I'm Genesis. Um, yeah, like the book of the Bible. So um, I spent my time in New York with a group at Stanley Isaacs, which is a place that delivers um, meals to homebound elderly people. Um, I think their organization, it's called like Meals on Wheels. But um, so our day just started out um, by going to the center and grabbing our food and routes. And then from there, it was just like a lot of walking and getting lost kind of. But um, David divided our group super evenly <coughs> by having me and him um, just deliver to like the first floor and buildings with elevators. And then, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Jaden and Marco got to walk up like 12 flights of stairs. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> but seriously, we got to meet um, like a lot of really cool people. Um, they were really grateful to just have somebody to like talk to and listen to them. Um, and they were all like really interesting people that we got to talk to and they really felt like friends by the end of the week because they just like kept on recognizing us and getting excited that we were there. Um, also David sang to some people on the buzzer and they really loved that, so yeah. Um, so after we were done delivering all of our meals, um, we usually went back to the center and like packed meals for the next day. So we packed um, like cold packs and like frozen meals sometimes, and then the kitchen packed hot meals. Um, then we would usually have our lunch and have some good convos. That was fun, um, <laughs> which involved a lot of Uncrustables too. Um, and then after that, we subwayed back to wherever we were going. We went to Tompkins Square a little bit. Um, sometimes we would like clean up at Graffiti Church after they were done. Um, but yeah, we usually ended the day with like sightseeing and stuff, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, the trip was just really cool to see like what we could do when we came together, which sounds really cheesy, but like it's the truth. So yeah. <laughs> uh, Ayo, I'm Luke Shadle. Um, I was with the graffiti team. <laughs> And Isabel covered most of it, but yeah, it was mostly a daycare VBS style kind of thing. So like we did like the same type of things we would do at VBS plus lunch, plus board games, stuff like that, hang out for a bit. And it's like for the same purpose too of like connecting the kids to the church and telling them about Jesus as well. So that's mainly what we help with. And the other good part about the trip I'd say is all the times we get to <laughs> hang out with each other and um, grow closer to God and grow closer to each other. And yeah, that's about all I got. <laughs> I'm Jim. <laughs> Anyways, as you hear, uh, we were in uh, two different groups. And so those who were with Stanley, Isaac, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Those are the ones that were... Uh, distributing food to the neighborhoods. The other group was at Graffiti Church doing vacation Bible school. Raise your hands. 
All right. And then there were a few that sort of crisscrossed, not very much. We won't have them raise their hands. But anyways, um, one of the aspects that we did is we uh, would have debriefing times and so forth, and we talked about what we were learning. And I think uh, we came away with, with two very important life lessons, something that we can take away from the city and apply right where we're at. And so the first one with the uh, Stanley Isaac group is they're delivering meals to uh, apartment complexes, uh, knocking on doors, and they're basically there to provide food for, for the hungry. But what oftentimes they would find out is that uh, they were hungry also for connection, human connection. Uh, a lot of these uh, residents they go to are on the older end of the spectrum and uh, don't get out very often. And uh, you can imagine a city that was locked down with COVID for a, an extended period of time. And so uh, they learned, the Stanley Isaac group, raise your hands again, that we are, oh, you didn't raise your hands, but that's okay. All right, thank you. Um, th but they learned that th there's a very important hunger, and that is the hunger for human connection. Because we're, we're wired by our Lord God to have connection with other people. And so, it's, so sometimes it's hard because you're delivering food, you have food to deliver, and you want to make sure it gets delivered, and so you're on sort of a, a pace to get that done, but the, the important aspect was, you know, it's not just getting out of the building, not just delivering the food, it's also when those who wanted to talk could talk. So I heard from many people, one of them being Cody, for example, that one person shared a uh, hundred different life lessons to him. You'll ask, ask him. He knows at least one of them. So um, <laughs> others, they just wanted to be known, didn't they? They had stories to share. So that, that connection is so important. Well, the other group, I was with the Vacation Bible School at Graffiti Church. And uh, each, each, there's about 20 students involved in that. And each one gets a wristband, depending upon their age, to define what group they're in. But that wristband also uh, is used to, like, you, they had a system of dots and strikes. You didn't want to get dots and strikes because that means you had to sit out and so forth. You wanted to get a star, because that meant you did something, you get an extra treasure at the end of the day. Everybody wants extra treasure. So, you know, and I, and I can, I'm not going to use names, but I can tell with the Graffiti Church, uh, you, you know their names, those who got a lot of dots, and sometimes a lot of strikes, right? Am I not, yes, you, they, they make themselves obviously known on a very quick, quickly, quick basis. Anyways, all that to say is our life lesson we learned from that is, in, in a sense, we're all wearing invisible wristbands. And it, it's very easy when we, we, we don't always follow the Lord's path the way we should, right? And we get dots. Sometimes we get strikes. But yet the scripture tells us the Lord is patient with us. He's patient with us that we might come to repentance. And that helps overflow into to my life so I can be patient with those kids who I'd rather maybe throw up against the wall. I would never do anything like that. But we all understand, yes, I'm not violent, I'm not. So anyways, thank you so much for your prayers uh, for, for this group. Uh, I think uh, Miss Melissa, who is the director of the Vacation Bible School at Graffiti Church, said this, which I think is very important, is she said, we went by faith allowing high school students to help lead this Vacation Bible School because we thought, thought for sure it would be a problem. And after day one, she said it was a tremendous blessing. So she said it was good that we reached out in faith to you to come and to serve us at Vacation Bible School. So anyways, thank you. you go ahead. Go ahead. Let's, uh, let's pray for... Let's, let's pray for, for the trip and, and, and what has happened here in this group. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the ability of um, all of these students and also these student leaders to travel to New York City. And God, we lift up first the, the folks that, um, that they were able to touch, the students, uh, and then those on the other end of the age spectrum that are uh, possibly shut in and receiving meals. And God, we lift up those folks today. Each has a name, just like all of each of us. Each of them has a story, just like each one of us. And um, we pray that they saw Jesus through our students, that they come to know you or come to know you better because of our students. And God, we just ask, um, you know, they, the, the world is, is filled with those that need you, and we pray that um, just that those folks are seeing you today, are hearing your still small voice.
God, we also pray then for our students and our student leaders that went, the, that went to New York City these past days. And we pray that the, um, just the trip resonates with them as they sit and reflect, as they remember some of the challenges that they, that they faced, that it wasn't just something to do, an activity to check off the calendar, but God, that you were working in them. And God, we pray that as they grow in their years, that they can look back on this trip and think, good things happened. The Lord was moving, and I was a part of it, and I want to keep going. God, thank you for this trip, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to continue in worship. We're going to sing It Is Well in the middle of this song uh, is the hymn, It Is Well, as well. So uh, let's sing this out this morning, knowing that our God, through it all, through it all, our eyes are on him. Let's sing.
my eyes are on you through it all. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Thank you, Sam, and uh, the praise team. Um, just to be clear with what Jen said, um, I was doing that for Marco's benefit with those <laughs> stairs, and I kept telling him, Coach Richards, fourth quarter, Columbus Grove, you're going to thank me uh, come October. So I just want, you know, it was for his benefit. Um, I, I just want to say what a blessing it is to, to be able to share with our, our church family this morning um, and we're going to start a new series. I think Pastor Nick uh, finished up Romans last week, and so we're going on to the summer of the Psalms. And um, I don't know about you, but um, I, I kind of been thinking in my, my mind uh, what psalm to choose before I left. Um, and it's this image of a tumbling sky, a lament. Boy, lamenting sounds fun today, doesn't it? And I, and I think about all the things that are going on in our world. I think about um, you know, how many more times can we hear that someone got killed, you know, in a mass shooting? Um, how many times can we hear about uh, politics that are um, just cantankerous situations? How many times? And it just goes on and on and on. And we think about this phrase of how long, Lord, must we hear about this, this stuff? I think we go to New York City and you think about um, the, the rising violence just in the city, um, Compared to last year, whether it's subway violence or just people um, that we were delivering meals to, I can't tell you how many elderly people would tell us when we left, be careful. I was mugged here a month ago. And these are elderly people. I mean, the violence is just on the rise, and you see uh, a prevalent use of drug use all over the city. And, and you think about these New Yorkers that are saying the same thing that, that Psalm 13 is saying. How long, O oh Lord? These brothers and sisters are saying, how long? And, and you might be here this morning thinking the same thing with your own life, but whether it's the economy or, or losing someone or whatever that looks like, you might be saying the same thing as the psalmist David said, how long, O oh Lord, must I be here? And as we look at Psalm 13, I, I think of that image of a sky, and, and I didn't prescribe the rain today, but I thought it kind of went along with it. It's just this rain and dreary morning when it's supposed to be summer and 75, right, and sunny. And we have to think about this in our own life of, of how long, Lord, how long will me, must we deal with, with this? So if you'd be so kind to open up your Bible to Psalm chapter 13, only six verses today, and we're going to look at them this morning. Well, we need to understand the person who wrote the psalm and what about, what's about him, and that's, that's David, and I, I chose that psalm and as David wrote the psalm, and, and I want to think about what's going on in David's life or what has already occurred in David's life up until this point. Um, a lot of scholars believe that Psalm 13 is tied into 1 Samuel 19 when David was going through an increasingly a difficult and troubled time in his life. And he forgets kind of the narrative of what's already happened. So to talk about what's already happened, uh, a little bit about David is David, you know, was the shepherd boy. I know this story quite well. My mom named me after David and made me play the harp, so David and I have a couple things in common. But, but David uh, did some things that were pretty impressive with God's help. I mean, when they were choosing someone to go up against Goliath, the big giant that some of you may know the story of, um, David was the guy who said, I got this. The Lord's already delivered me from a lion and a bear. I mean, those are not like... <laughs> You think about that, those are big animals, the kings of the jungle, so to speak. 
And God's already given him deliverance over a lion and a bear. And then also, uh, then he proceeded with God's help to kill Goliath. No simple feat. The giant warrior that was taunting them. And the, the big guy, they rolled out and they said, who's going to kill this guy? And David said, I will. And we have to also understand that David's already been uh, chosen as the future successor to Saul. A lot of good things in David's life, wouldn't you say? From a shepherd boy to the chief of the king, the chief of the kingdom. David, David's got a lot of things going for him. But yet, we find in Psalm 13, we find in Psalm 13 a broken and scared man. Read along with me. Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2, which says this. How long, Lord, will you continue to ignore me? How long will you pay no attention to me? How long must I worry and suffer in broad daylight? How long will my enemy gloat over me? Boy, that sounds like a man who has all these successes in the rearview mirror, doesn't it? And he's just contemplating what's happening. Well, what's happening is, if you look at Psalm, I mean, 1 Samuel 19, is that Saul's had enough. He's had enough. And so instead of trusting the plan of succession, Saul goes, let's kill him. And so we find David on the run. In fact, it, it even says that David was hiding in a cave. Frightened. And I would be frightened too. I would be petrified of what's going on in my life if that's what happened to me. Is that David is in a cave. He's thinking this is it. Doubting the calling that God's put on his life. And thinking that the end is near. Losing his faith. Saying, God, how long? In fact, he mentions how long, how many times? Four. Four how longs in two verses. How long, Lord? How long? How long will you continue to ignore me? How long will you not pay attention to me? How long must I worry and suffer in broad daylight? That's interesting right there, right? Because a lot of us like to suffer alone. Kind of behind the scenes. We don't want anybody to know what's going on in our life. We don't want anybody to understand the pain we're going through. It's a private suffering, but you see... The public pain that David's going through, everybody's saying. He's saying, broad daylight. How long, God, is everybody going to know that I'm suffering? How long will my enemy gloat over me that, that this guy is going to kill me? Now, wait a minute. Did God get it wrong? Did God anoint David, choose David, and then all of a sudden, did he say, ah, I think I think we're just going to take him out. Well, of course not. In fact, David has a focus, and his focus is on the problem and not who provides the solution. His focus is in the cave and not outside of the cave. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times in life when things happen to me, I start thinking about being in a cave Instead of about the one who provides the eternal solution, and that's Jesus Christ. Some of us need to remember, uh, and myself included, that God has delivered us from bears and lions and Goliaths and has put us on a path to serve him. And so when things happen in our life, we need to recall what God's already done and trust the promise he has for our life. David, it seems, has forgotten that he is going to be king. He forgot about that. He's so worried about the, the stuff around him that he's lamenting. And I don't know about you, but I can identify with David. Sometimes I feel a lot like David. I worry. We worry. David is conflicted with anxiety. He's, he's pleading. He's suffering. And he's worrying, right? And so we worry too, right? I, re I remember when, when Lucy had her surgery and you guys uh, prayed for us and her appendectomy and then, and then she's 
she's okay now and she's running around like nothing happened, maybe a little more ornery, I don't know, maybe Children's Hospital put a little more ornery in her. But now, in August, my daddy's girl, self-proclaimed, is going to kindergarten. Do you think I'm not worried about that? Yes. I don't want her to go to kindergarten. She can just stay at home. That's ridiculous, right? But sometimes when we laugh and we chuckle, right, we think about those worries that may not be, seem so big to you but are just insurmountable to other people. David, if we looked at the whole script, we'd say David's got it made. I mean, he's going to be king. But yet, he's in the cave. And maybe one of, some of us need to get out of the cave today and remember what God's already done in our life. And remember, again, that God has a plan for you, just like he did for David. Well, let's read on. The next couple of verses, he gets a little more personal to God. And I appreciate that about David. David is pulling no punches. He's being brutally honest. He's being unbelievably transparent. He's going to the person that knows him well. Why? Because God made him. And so because God desires that human relationship with us, he wants us to be honest. Well, David says this, as we read on in verse uh, 3 and 4. Look at me, answer me, O Lord, revive me, or else I will die. Then my enemy will say I have defeated him. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. David is saying if you don't do it, no one will. And not only that, it's, we're, we're defeated. We're defeated. It's over. It's over. Whatever we had hoped to accomplish, God, you remember you anointed me king. It's over. And maybe David's helping himself understand what God's trying to do. Revive me, O Lord, or I will die. Give me life. David has seen God be the life giver, and he's trying to tap into that, saying, God, remember I, I know you're the, right, the life giver, and you're the only one that can revive me. Horrible situation. David alone in a cave, worrying, trying to change the attitude of his heart. And I remember some people in New York that were in horrible situations. The first one uh, that we met this past week, the first one was, was Miss Melissa. Miss Melissa Reyes uh, it was, is a director of the kids program at Graffiti Church. And when she found out we were going to the 9-11 memorial on Monday, she asked me, asked Jamie if, if she could share her testimony. And her testimony was so powerful because she was actually on the 35th floor when the plane hit. And not a believer. And so the people around her, though, were all believers, and they as the building was hit and she was in shock like anybody else would be, she stumbled around and those believers helped her get down 35 stories going down the stairs, passing firemen up. She got out of there and she said, I was just in shock. And she lives all the way down by Graffiti Church and she walked barefooted to her house. Years later, still not a Christian, grew up in a Catholic home. She went to Graffiti Church for a Christmas toy drive and spent two hours in the prayer room and accepted Jesus Christ. And she's serving in that church today and impacted your students this week. She got out of the cave. She could have stayed in the cave and said, oh, woe is me. How long, O oh Lord, must I suffer with this trauma that I saw? And she shared more graphically than I will today with our students. I think of another lady uh, named Miss Edna. Miss Edna was a lady that was pushing a cart. And she came into the church. She's homeless. But comes every day to feed other people. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. 
and has a smile and is excited about serving Jesus and just wants to see these little kids eat. Not only that, she started a clothing ministry on the second floor of the church where she clothes the people. Why? Because Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was naked, you clothed me. Edna could be sitting in her cave thinking about, woe is me, woe is me. But she realizes that God's called her, she accepted Christ, and she must get out of the cave of suffering and serve other people. And boys, I'm telling you what, she has an amazing smile. Jesus is shining through her. The other lady I think of is this lady last week who was wheeled in beside me named Barbara, little New Yorker, 80-some years old, in a wheelchair right beside me. Pastor Kareem said, David, can she sit by you? And I said, sure. First worship song, she yells out. It's a different kind of church, smaller church. She yells out the worship leader, it was better last week. <laughs> I thought, man, this is going to be the best Sunday of my life. <laughs> right? I thought, I'll bring it back for Sam. It would be great. Um, but you know what? Despite her ordinariness, do you know what? She used to be homeless. Her and her husband were homeless. ABC News did a story on her living in Central Park. And Graffiti Church bought a building and said, if you live here and take care of the building, you won't be homeless anymore. So this lady at about 86 years old lives up in the Bronx now, pays for a car service to wheel her into a car to come down to Graffiti Church every Sunday. And I said, Barbara, I'm not very good with math, and, and I think New York has other churches. Why do you come down here every Sunday morning? She goes, David, this is my family. And so it was super convicting to me as I was reading this psalm. We think about the how long, so we think about being in a cave like David was. These three people got out of the cave and started serving Jesus with their overflow. Because they understand that God is putting them in a place to serve. Just like David in their despair, they cried out to God at different times, accepted Christ, and now are serving. David, you understand in the psalm, David is saying, listen, I understand who I need to go to. I understand why I need to pray these things, but I'm having a hard time holding on to that promise. I'm forgetting what you did with the lion, the bear, Goliath, and calling me to be king. And, and now I'm, I'm just conflicted because, you know what, quite frankly, I didn't realize it was going to be this hard. And I think that's a lesson for me and you is that on this Christian journey, we, we don't realize that things are going to be hard. God is calling us to die to self and live to him and that's extremely hard to do in a tangible way, right? Because I don't know about you, but me, I, I like to hold on to things. And, and instead of having a, a Christ focus, I have a me focus. And I truly think that in this process for David, that God was working on his heart. So that he would become more refined to be used by him. Now, let's look at the next thing. It says, and I, and I agree with this, is who do you call on when you hit rock bottom? For David, it was God. Who is it for us? Or, or what do we get involved in? Or what do we fill our lives with that's not of, of God? When we hit rock bottom, who do you call on? I would say in the case of Melissa, Edna, and Barbara, they're all uh, at different things in New York City. They hit rock bottom. They found God. Who do you call on when you hit rock bottom? Now, here's the other thing. David goes on, the last two verses, says this, but I trust in your faithfulness. May I rejoice because of your deliverance. I will sing praises to the Lord when he vindicates me. Do you guys see the attitude switch in David? There's a switch. For how longs? Then he goes into some doubt. And now he's saying, but, but, 
I trust in you. The whole complexity of the psalm changes just like that. And I don't know if it was because David remembered the upbringing and the stories of how God delivered the Israelites and all this and, and the amazing stories that he would have heard. I don't know if he remembered uh, the bear, the lion, Goliath, or the calling on him for being a king. Maybe it was a, a, a mixture of everything. But I do know that the whole verse changes the whole chapter. But I trust in your faithfulness. May I rejoice because of your deliverance. I will sing praises to the Lord when he vindicates me. It doesn't say if, it says when. And some of us need to hear that this morning, that, that God is going to vindicate you. Now, I don't mean that in like this health, wealth kind of gospel, like God's a genie. That's not how that works. But what I do mean is that according to God's plan for you. And that plan might be bumpy. That plan might be hard. But all I know is that God is saying, listen, when, he, when David cried out to him, he's saying, God, vindicate me. I know you will. I'm going to start rejoicing and praising God now because I know that you will vindicate me. And some people here today need to understand that you don't have to wait to rejoice and praise God. You can do it in the midst of the cave. The lady on the airplane, and you guys know how much I like planes, the lady on the airplane was flying. She was going to visit a son, and they started hitting turbulence. And this lady was a little bit older, and she was actually just knitting, just getting after it. Us Mennonites like that. We, we like to build quilts and things like that. She's knitting away. And they start to hit turbulence, and the plane is starting to really get after it with the turbulence. And next thing you know, they put the, the fastened and the seatbelt sign on, and, and, and it's really bumping around. And the lady beside her is getting real nervous. And she says, can I... Can I ask you a question? She's asking this of the lady that's just sitting there calmly. They said, sure. Can I ask, why are you so calm? And she said, well, I'm on my way to see my son. We're supposed to land, you know, in like an hour and a half. But I had this other son. This other son knew Jesus, and, and I know Jesus, and he was in a car accident a few years ago and died. He's in heaven. So I figure either way today, I'm going to see one of my sons. Now that's not bad theology, folks, because she understands that in the midst of tough stuff, that God is still in the midst of it and directing everything. And so it's okay to rejoice in the midst of a cave or storm or whatever you're going through. So lastly... Rejoicing in worship comes when one rests in the goodness of God's love and faithfulness. Now, you've got to understand the goodness of God doesn't mean just free stuff. That's not what that means at all. David is saying, listen, I'm rejoicing because of your steadfast faithfulness. David didn't know, I don't believe that David knew what the, the outcome was going to be, but he still reorganized his thinking and thought, you know what, God, you've called me to it. You will bring me through it. And some of us here this morning need to understand that we can rejoice in worship now. Resting in God's givenness doesn't mean that God is some gene in a bottle, but rather he's the one that writes our life. And through the ups and the downs, we can praise him for what he's doing, what he has done, and what he will do. As Sam and the group comes, um, there's a song that when my mom died um, was on the radio, and I, and I could just hear it over and over and over again, and it just ministered to me so much, and I thought, man, if, if I was David in the cave, because, you know, David's a fellow musician, right, as, me, as I am, um, David... <laughs> David, I don't know what he was playing on the lyre, 
but, but I, I'm assuming he, he was probably singing something. Music's very healing, right? And so I, I don't know what he was singing, but for me, when my mom died and this song came on the radio, it was a song called The Goodness of God. Wow. And again, we're not talking about stuff. We're talking about the goodness of God's promises. God doesn't change. He's always the same. Yesterday, today, forever. You understand? So we can rejoice when things are hard. We can rejoice when things are good. Why? Because God's goodness is there. And so this morning, you can worship how you want to. If some of you want to raise your hand and say, thank you, God, for your goodness, do it. If you want to sit and reflect, that's okay too. But may we all understand that if you're here today and you've asked Jesus into your life, God's goodness and promises are true. And so no matter if you're in the cave, praise him. If you're out of the cave, praise him. Let's pray. Can we stand and pray? Father, thank you for this opportunity we have. Thank you for these He's this church family that I love so much. And Father, I pray that if there's someone here that's struggling, may they reach out to someone today to, to pray with, to encourage. Father, thank you so much for this psalm. Lord, we, we are a lot like David sometimes, or we say, how long, Lord? It's encouraging to see this in your word, that we're not unique. But Father, no matter what, May we praise you. May we rest in your goodness. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing and what you will do and what you have done in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dave, for bringing the word this morning, the challenge. And let's sing that song, Goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Though your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire, amen, in darkest night. You walk close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God.
Church, let's pray together this morning. God, when we are in that cave, we must think of you. And uh, each of us have a different road, and some have bumps, some have craters. And it is what it is. God, we know we keep our eyes on you, and we lean on your faithfulness, and you will lead us through. God, thank you for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.